love to see it! You love to see it! Yes! How's it going people? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another episode of the Modded Me Arta Madness. In today's video I'm going to be doing the rear end of my car, getting it completely ready and finally having the car completely roadworthy. So the plan is to get the whole rear end of the car put together, which includes putting the bushes into these two parts here, which we love putting bushes in, yes. And then we're going to get the car to the correct ride height. So at the moment, it's just at a random ride height that we've set it to. We'll sort that all out. We won't be able to do the damping particularly because obviously haven't driven the car yet to work it out. I'll also show you everything that my dad's already done in the car because he's just gone crazy this week putting everything together and getting the car into a state that it can be finished today. Done way too much of the car if I'm perfectly honest. Then after I've driven the car home today, tomorrow morning I will be getting the cars, tracking and alignment done at Quick Fit, which is going to be excellent news because hopefully I'll have a completely roadworthy car that, yeah, is in a much better state than it was before all of this nonsense happened to it. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. And without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> Okay, so in the week that I've been gone, my dad has completely done the rear left-hand side of the car. Everything here is in place, so you probably can't see it that well. Let me just zoom in here. You can see that the VMAX suspension is in there on the rear, that red little coil in there. Everything like that has been done. Also, you can't actually see it there, but the rear wishbones have both been covered in hammerite, or the rust was removed from them, and they were covered in hammerite to keep them protected and also make them look a bit fresher. Over here, we can see the back right-hand side of the car, which is what we're working on today. The rear suspension, as I said, is already in again. And on top of that here, you can see the anti-roll bar. My dad has genuinely gone above and beyond trying to put together as much of the car as possible over the last week. It's just, yeah, really, really kind of him. In order to put in the suspension, what you would normally do is you come up in here, and then you'd remove the rear tire and, oh, I mean the spare tire, and then you would fit it in under there. And for the other side, just remove this little panel in here, it's a couple of bolts, and then the rear suspension sticks up through there. In fact, you can just about see it in there. I don't know if you can actually see that. There's like a little bolt somewhere in there. And yeah, you would fit it in like that. So yes, sadly, I don't get to show you how all of that stuff went together. But I do get to show you how the back right, right hand side of the car is going to go together in terms of the wishbones and then also how to set up the suspension to the correct ride height. And you guys will probably tell me that it's the wrong height, but who cares? So I think we need less of me walking around talking and more of me putting bushes into the car. Let's get it started. So a quick update from last week then. Uh, I said that there was a little inner bit missing from one of these drop links and it wasn't. It was in the box. So we're fortunate there. But anyway, yeah, similar idea to what we did last week, literally just putting in more bushes. So first thing to do, as I've just done is work out which uh, bushes are the correct ones for each side so these obviously will go in here one will go in that side one will go in that side and then we'll put in the pins to fill it up this week instead of using the grease I'm going to try using some good old-fashioned fairy liquid instead just put that inside there like so what this should do instead basically is dry up faster than the grease that we used last week on those inside bits as you don't necessarily need these bits to be slippy that's really easy really simple same again for the back side nice literally super super simple we'll do the same again now on this bit I actually think that was easier as a job than it was when we used the grease last week so that is a bit of a benefit now let's put the pins in that does require the grease because that makes sure that in the longer term the pins don't start squeaking against the bushing so obviously in this case again it's slightly different we get some of the grease wrap it around the pin all the way through and then a little bit on the bush clearly i've been defeated let's get used the vice that's one of two should be nice and flush on both ends i'll do the same to that side Right, it must be said, I am quite happy that I have completed the bushes. Even being easier with the situation, having a garage and all the right tools and equipment, they still are an absolute pain. So let's have a look at some of the parts of the car as well whilst I've got a moment. So these are the rear dampers that we have removed from the car. What I would say about these is that they have completely lost any damping. They are literally just like running on springs. So that was what was making the car particularly undrivable 
when uh, taking it out on the roads. So the fact that that has now been changed to the VMAX stuff should make life so much better. Also, it is literally chaos outside. Look at those up there. Like... This is practically typhoon weather for England. Also here you can see the anti-roll bar that was on the car. Look at how thin it is. Like literally it is super, super tiny compared to, if I run around behind here, how much thicker this one is. So it's gonna do a much better job of stiffening up the car and making it handle well. So I just talk to you what's going on down here then. So I've got this in here. Uh, Dad showed me where it fits in. So hopefully you can just about see. Uh, in fact, it's not it's not very easy to show you, but right there you can see that this is one side in there and then that's the other side in there. And now the bolts are actually okay, but I am going to still clean up the rust that's kind of on the edges. As I'm getting tracking alignment on tomorrow, it's probably best that I have some half decent bolts for people to use. So that, that should be fine. I'm gonna make sure that that's all stuck in there. Then I'm gonna lift the hub here. That bit there is gonna go and fit into here like so. Once that's all in, I'll then look at putting in the lower wishbone which will go in inside there and inside there as well and then that will have cam adjuster bolts on it which is uh same thing that we had in the previous episode of this if you haven't watched that already and after that we in mounted the brakes on and yeah that'll be pretty much most of this side of the car redone oh and not to mention the drop link that will be attaching that to i believe the lower wishbone That's one bolt nice and cleaned up. It's not perfect, but it's much nicer in terms of working with. And I'll do the same to the other bolts as well. I'll do that off camera, but I'll make sure they're all nice and clean. Right, that's one set on. Whew. Now we're gonna do the hub on. Shouldn't be too difficult. Famous last words. Future JB here again. I thought I'd talk you through this bit since everything else has been quite self-explanatory. It's all just bolts and nuts. And this kind of is too, but I just mentioned the fact that putting the hub into that little slot can be quite difficult, particularly if you've got the poly bushes on there. They're quite thick. So yeah, it does kind of get in the way. But once you've pushed it in, I would then suggest maybe levering it in with a screwdriver or in my case, I used a bolt, pushing it through, putting the nut on and then tightening it up. It really is that simple. Stunning. That's the hub now attached to the upper wishbone, as you can clearly see there. Stunning. So having learned from the previous hub being put in, I realized that maybe I should use some fairy liquid to make it a little bit easier to put the lower wishbone in. And this definitely helped quite a lot because it was a tiny bit rusty or corroded. So it was nice to give it a little bit of slip to get that in there. And then once it was in, again, a simple case of fitting the camera adjuster bolts in and tightening up the nuts on the rear ends, very simple. I would just say that I was particularly lucky because my dad tipexed the spots where the camera adjuster bolts were actually facing into at the start, which made my life a lot easier in terms of getting the right cam. Obviously, we were getting this car tracking in a line the day after, so it didn't matter too much. But in terms of driving the car home, I wanted it to be at least a little bit close to where it had been previously. Let me just show you guys what I've done so far down here. So I could climb under here, just see in the light here that, wait, where, where is it? Where am I pointing? Here. So if you just look here, let me get the light to it. You can see that I've got that camera just to bolt in right there. Similarly, just over the other side in there, you can just about see there's a camera just to bolt put in there. So this wishbone is now in place. I can't actually move it, but yeah, it is in place. And then next up is gonna be putting on these ones here. So those all in there, so that, oh, uh, yeah, so that it connects up to the hub again. Also, whilst we're down here, do I show you something? Now I know what my exhaust pipe is. It is an IL Motorsports exhaust. So yes, that's the one that IL Motorsport exhaust system. Very nice. So we fitted the hub and then we also fit the hub on to the lower wishbone, which was just using the pin that came from the car previously. It was quite hard to put in because of maybe some corrosion inside. So we greased it up and then had to use a hammer to make sure that it went all the way in. But other than that, not a big or difficult job. Next up is going to be putting the shock absorber in. So the shock absorber fits in just in there, as you can see. So that's gonna go into there. Um, get that all mounted up nice. Sorry, I've just hit the microphones. That probably sounds really weird. And then also here you can see the anti-roll bar gonna be fitting in there with the drop link. So they're the next two things to do. And then we're practically there. That is the suspension on. 
Love to see that. That's exactly what I wanted. Now we need to put this drop link here in via here. So that's the next step. Also, it is absolutely chucking it down. Storm Dennis has come with some kind of vengeance right now. So yes, driving home this afternoon is going to be in the rain. Next up, we had to fit the brake assembly back onto the hub, which was basically a case of putting the disc brake back in and then the caliper over the top with a few bolts in the back to make sure that it all stays in place. And then once my dad had done that, we put the wheels back on the car and then dropped it to the floor to see exactly what the height would be with the suspension set up right in the middle. So we just pulled the car down off the sands and you can see there is quite a significant amount of tuck. So yes, we're going to have to go slightly higher on the rear in order to get the car home. Otherwise, this is gonna be some next stance machine rather than something that we can take to the track. One thing we have very much learned from this exercise is that the VMAX suspension, if you put it smack bang in the middle, your car will be a stance car and not a useful car. So yes, we lifted the car back up and then changed the suspension height once more to make sure that it was the right height to get home on. Right, so all the wheels are on the car. The damping is just being adjusted here on the front end. We've done the damping on the rear end. We don't know if it's the correct setting or anything. We'll have to find that out as we drive the car. Again, the suspension will be sagging as well over time, uh, like, like the next couple of weeks or whatever. So we'll have to revisit and make sure the ride height is correct. It's at an all right height right now. You can kind of see here, about yay high. Just about maybe five millimeters higher on the rear than the front at the moment. Um, I think we've got like 12 clicks of damping in the car as well. So yeah, it's, uh, it's looking okay at the moment. I think next step will be to basically get in the car and drive it home for the first time. There's a, one more thing that we haven't got on the car yet, which is under here, there is one, of the, one or two of the guards. They need to be put on, but I think we're gonna keep them off for now because they get in the way of doing the alignment and tracking for tomorrow. So rather than just get charged extra for the time they'll spend putting those on and off, keep them off the car. Now, yes, that should have been time to get in the car and drive it away, but actually we had a look at the front brakes one more time just to check they're okay, which is probably something that you should do whenever you're messing around with the brakes on your car. And they had actually seized, so we thought we would sort those out before we got back into driving it. And once they were all nice and free and no longer seized, it was time to jump in the car and get going. So yes, the car has now had everything put onto it. So despite the slight problems we had with the brakes just then, the car is literally rolling under its own weight. There's no real issue here. Theoretically, it should start up and drive away and we're gonna drive it home now. Um, it's a mess inside, which is obviously no big deal. But so the next steps for me are to get in the car, start driving it home. Hopefully I can record a tiny bit of that. And then tomorrow morning, get the alignment done. And then the car is basically in a roadworthy state, which we love to see. Right then, let's see how undignified I can do this whole getting into the car situation. Oh, oh mate, I've really lost my trousers. Stunning. Oh, and now I've looked. Yep. So uh, what we know immediately is that harness seat belts aren't practical, as if that was a key learning. Right, this is it. I'm not gonna do a full on drive to show you guys how amazing the car is, etc. for right now, because it is raining awfully and uh, I haven't driven the car like this yet. The tracking and alignment hasn't been done. I also can't fit in currently. So yeah, no no first drive video or anything, no GoPro taking place here. Just want you guys to see my basic reaction to driving this car in its uh, semi-drivable state. Right, so on the go those, that's gonna be a faff every time I get in the car and start driving it. But luckily it's not my daily and it won't ever be, so that's all good. Here we go. And driving it without the rear suspension bouncing immediately off the line, which is huge up and over these bumps. Oh my word. Yeah, it's, uh, you can tell already, I've not even done anything in it yet, but you can tell that it's, it's pointy. 
is probably the, not the right word, but I want to say pointy. Oh, it's going to need some more damping adjustment. It's quite hard on the old back. Oh man, I'm, I, I can't believe we've managed to get this much of the car done. This is about maybe two grand's worth of parts on the car already, and we're only just getting started. This is like phase one, 90% complete for now. There's plenty more to do. We've got the fuzz coming up in front of us here. That's definitely a clickbait title waiting to happen. We're not there up to who's been causing chaos. Front window's getting so steamed up already. It's just not been driven for a little while, so let's get out of here nice and quick. Yeah, the positioning of my uh, knees is not ideal at all, but that's to be fixed. Also, I'm taking these speed bumps very slowly, but it could probably go over them fast, to be honest. The car's quite high at the moment. It's not it's not really high, but it's not also very low. We need to spend some like give the car some time to sag as I've said previously in this video. It's so different. It's completely I, I've not even turned a corner properly yet, and I can already see just how sort of different the car feels off the line in when I'm turning left and right here like immediately the feel is completely different to how it was before beforehand it was very wet because of that back of the car it was just super bouncy and not very useful now that I've got the suspension on already I haven't even turned a corner properly yet oh I can, I can barely talk I'm just uh struggling here yeah, we're about to run the motorway, so we'll see what it's like in acceleration with this new suspension. One thing that happened before is that you'd accelerate and the whole rear of the car would drop to the floor. Now it shouldn't do that, so as I get past this goal, it's literally going at like no speed whatsoever. Oh, it's so different. The car just feels like it wants to sit in a nice angle and just go for it. The whole is completely changed. Oh my word. Can't go too fast today though because one, the tracking alignment's not done, and two, it's illegal, and three, um, it's Storm Dennis. So Storm Dennis is impacting my ability to just drive this car and do some nice fast stuff in it. I think I might go to Tesco's, get my dad a beverage or two to say thank you for the amount of time he spent working on this car over the last couple of weeks. It's literally insane what that man has been able to achieve like in my absence. I've really got to put massive respect out to him for the hard work he's done and the hard work he'll probably continue to do on the car in the near future. Oh mate, just taking a couple of corners quite quickly there. The car was just flat, it cornered completely flat. Oh, yes, exactly what I wanted. It's going to be really strange going from this car back into the Polo again. Like this feels so sharp and strong and like, the polo feels fine on the roads like it, it's it's done a lot better from all the modifications that we've done to it but this feels completely different this is a whole new kettle of fish now oh it's so sick it's so sick yes what you're currently seeing here is someone who has spent way too much money already on a car and has been worried the whole time that the car was going to be a waste of money and it's not it's just not it's so good See if we can keep the back out a tiny bit here. Oh, I love to see it. You love to see it. Yes. I'm so gassed. I'm so gassed. This is so sick. So normally if I ever kick the back out or go around that corner, you'd lose control immediately because of the rear suspension being so awful. And clearly it's the complete opposite now. It's hard to actually get the back out. And then when it does go out, the control on it immediate that was my first ever time kicking the back out in this car with that this new setup and whoa it's good it's so good here we are at tesco then i think i'm going to uh, stop recording now and the next recording that you should see will be me on my way to quick fit maybe tomorrow morning I might do a little drive there just to show you guys and then we'll get the car aligned and then hopefully do a tiny little drive in it after the alignment that would be ideal i think but yes Let's go and do that. I'll see you tomorrow. So it is the morning and I'm now walking over to my MX-5. Look how cool this is. The fact that I've got the old Polo here and the MX-5 here, I'm gassed about this. So yes, taking the car to quick fit, which is definitely gonna overcharge me for some uh, tracking alignment to be done. But we'll see if this uh, is actually any good. So yeah, I'm hoping that it means the steering wheel no longer sticks to the left.
Right, people, I am back home in my bedroom, having taken the car to quick fit, done all the alignment and everything, and it's all sorted. This car is finally running straight, which is great. And yeah, I wanted to say a massive thank you to you guys for all your support on this channel. Really, really appreciate it because I wouldn't be able to do all this fun stuff without you guys. I wanted to show you as well, very briefly, this is the alignment stuff for the car. So this is how it was before. You can see all these red bits basically mean that it was out of line. And now you can see loads of greens, which is exactly what we wanted to see. So yeah, very happy about that. It means the car's gonna drive well when I take it to a track and it drives well right now as you've probably hopefully seen. I know this video is probably all over the place, completely disjointed and has no real structure to it, but I will start to do some more structured videos in the future on the MX-5 and hopefully get a nice first drive in there for you with the new modifications. And obviously there's plenty more modifications to come as well. Massive thank you to the patrons. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Listen.